I'm Becca from BM Bloom, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to harvest, clean, and store your mason bee cocoons to keep your habitats going for years to come. Providing habitat for solitary bees is a fun and easy way to make a positive impact on your local ecosystem. Solitary bees, like mason bees, are wildlife. And as soon as we put those habitats up, we are inserting ourselves in their life cycles. Left unattended, pests like pollen mites, parasitoid wasps, Houdini flies, or others can run rampant and cause bee populations to crash. Therefore, we are responsible for keeping these nesting sites clean and pest free. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we harvest our cocoons in October, when mason bees are fully formed adults inside of their cocoons. That's how they hibernate through the winter until temperatures in the spring warm them up, stir them into action again. Okay, to start, let's go over what you'll need to have on hand. First things first, you'll wanna have a nice open space somewhere where it's really cool inside of the room uh, that you don't mind getting a little bit dirty. We just have some craft paper laid out on a table. You'll want a bucket or a bowl or a pot of cool water that you can rinse your mason bee cocoons in. We add about a tablespoon of bleach per gallon of water to have a really dilute bleach solution that takes care of all of, any, all of the fungal diseases or anything that might have built up on your cocoons. Then you'll want a couple layers of paper towels or a cloth where you can lay your cocoons out to dry. Then you'll need some kind of storage container. We just use this long flat Tupperware lined with a couple layers of paper towel and just in the lid, we have holes poked into the top to allow some ventilation. Next, we'll open up our nesting tubes and trays to harvest our mason bee cocoons. There are a couple different nesting styles and uh, nesting materials, each with a slightly different way of harvesting. So we'll take a closer look at each one of those. If you have natural reeds, you'll need to crack and pry them open to expose the cocoons inside. If you're finding it to be a little tough with any particular reed, you can employ the use of a knife just to kind of get you started. If you have cardboard tubes, just find the edge where it starts, like on a paper towel roll or a toilet paper roll, and then use your nail to kind of peel it back. If you find it difficult to do so, you can employ the use of a nail clipper to get it going. If you have nesting trays, this is probably the easiest method for harvesting. If it's wrapped in a rubber band, you just remove that. Otherwise, you pry it open very easily and then scrape the cocoons and all the debris out of each little groove. Remove the cocoon from the tube, clean off any excess mud or debris, and set aside. Separate any diseased-looking larvae or cocoons that did not develop correctly due to fungal diseases. You may be wondering what all of this debris is on the outside. It's not moving, it's not living, just little round kind of cylinders <laughs> all over it. It's brown, uh, that's just mason bee larval frass. Uh, and it's totally normal to be expected and nothing to worry about. You may notice some cocoons are larger than others. We've got this great big ovular one and this smaller ovular one here. Uh, the smaller ones are males and the larger ones are females. So when you're replacing them in your habitats next year, you can have kind of a good idea of what your sex ratio is going to be. You'll notice that the smaller male cocoons are toward the front of the tube and that the larger female cocoons are toward the back of the tube. That's so that the males can emerge first. They're smaller in body. That sun, all of those rays are gonna be hitting them right there in the spring. They'll wake up, chew their way out into the world, and then they'll wait around for the females to come out so that they can mate. Take a good look at each cocoon. You'll wanna make sure to remove any that have pinholing or chewing or even look just slightly off. Pinholes suggest calcid wasp activity. These small wasps use long ovipositors or egg-laying organs to deposit eggs on the bee larvae. If you open the cocoons, you may find wasp larvae or developed adult wasps. You may also see pollen mites, which are naturally occurring mites that eat the pollen provisions left by the mother bee for the larva. This type of pest is called a kleptoparasite. With no food to eat, the larvae die and the pollen mites thrive. As neighboring bees emerge, they walk through the mites, transferring them to their future nesting sites. Another common pest are domestic beetles. 
these detritivores scavenge bee nests. Maybe the most important pest to have on your radar is a new invasive pest fly called the Houdini fly. A kleptoparasite of red mason bees from the UK, these flies have been introduced to the US and are now becoming established in the Pacific Northwest. Fly larvae and pupae should be separated from any healthy cocoons. Any removed pests can be frozen, then discarded to ensure they don't spread. Once cocoons are sorted from debris and pests, it's time to wash. Add cocoons to the cool bleach water bath, giving them a good stir. Strain cocoons from the bleach water, fill with fresh water, and rinse. Set cocoons on cloth or paper towels to dry. Use a container that can store all your cocoons in a layer that's only one to two cocoons thick. More than that can result in excess mold growth in your container. Slightly dampen your paper towel with a small amount of water. About a teaspoon or a light spritz will do. Add your cocoons in a thin layer and replace the lid. Prep a spot in your fridge to store the container. Preferably a spot that's easy to access and maintains a consistent temperature of 34 to 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Periodically, about once or twice a month, Add a few drops of water to your paper towel to maintain humidity in the container. And that's it. You'll store your cocoons through the winter and when temperatures reach above 55 degrees consistently every day next spring and all of your fruit trees start to bloom, you can replace your overwintered cocoons in your prepared habitats and start all over again. Thanks so much for watching. If this kind of content is the bee's knees for you, make sure you like and subscribe and see what else we put out. Wasps. Wasp. <laughs> Wasps. That word. <laughs>